Hi folks, it's Todd here, and today I'm taking you to South Carolina to a famous battlefield, Cowpens Battlefield. It's Cowpens National Park, and I'm going to turn here. You see the monument there. hope that's coming in okay. This is the visitor center, but unfortunately, it's closed. But I do want to take you around the battlefield so you can see what, uh, what it's all about. Um... If you've ever seen The Patriot in the last battle in that movie, it's Cowpens. And uh, Tarleton was there, Lieutenant Colonel Tarleton uh, of the British forces and his uh, craziness with his men. Um, yeah, so we're going to check this out and I'll give you some more information in just a second. So we're going to head this way. And here is the uh, British forces led by Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton. So you can see the total troops were 1,050. And these were well-trained uh, troops against uh, Morgan and the militia. So they had the militia, but they also, uh, Morgan did have 600 regular colonial troops as well. And there you go, Daniel Morgan, Brigadier General. So, and he has seen some action too, for sure, uh, before this. So, Morgan knew pretty much what he was doing uh, during this conflict at Cowpens. And over here, you also see the American forces. I'll kind of get up there for you so you can see it. So, if you want to pause and read all the names involved, please do so. So, we're going to head towards the battlefield now. So, if you go to Kings Mountain, um, the battles were pretty close as far as uh, dates go, including the Guilford Courthouse. Uh, and, and, but uh, Kings Mountain is north of here, so it's about a 30-minute drive from this location to Kings Mountain. And then the Guilford Courthouse battlefield is probably another little over an hour from Kings Mountain, So, if you want to do it in that order. So the way you find this place, if you're on 85 going south or north, um, this exit 92. And from exit 92, it's about a 10-mile drive towards the battlefield. So it's not, it's not too bad. So yeah, when you come here, you are out in the country. Middle of nowhere. So but yeah, here's the uh, beginning of your tour of historic cow pens. You get different directions you go to. You get a battlefield trail. Yeah, let's kind of pan around here. This is the old highway, believe it or not. Right there, that actually is the old trailway. We'll see if there's some markers. But from what I remember, I mean, it's been a few years since I've been out here. A good 10 or 12 years. It's been a while. Uh, but this was a, an actual roadway. Wa or, you know, like a wagon trail that was used back in the day. But yeah, it's uh, like I said, they they do a great job of taking care of these parks. They're, and they're also, a lot of locals come here, walk their dogs, and there's a huge loop. So there's a ton of cyclists that come out here because it's a couple, I think it's maybe two mile loop. You go around a bunch of times, man, you'll, you'll get your miles in. Um, but that's cool that, that they do that. So Morgan's Flying Army. Morgan's army came from many states. The two Carolinas, Delaware, Georgia, Maryland, Virginia. They were joined by the militia, some of whom had helped destroy the British army and loyalist Americans under Ferguson at Kings Mountain. They camped nearby without tents and nervously awaited dawn. And that's pretty much the outfits. That's the uniforms they wore back then. That would have been... Here's your Dragoons right there, the 3rd Regiment, uh, Continental. Uh, there's your Virginia Militia. And then your Carolina, also the Mountain Men, you know, the, the Carolina Militia. So you see that uh, outfit he's getting on, you know, he has on the leather skins and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. And then there's the Maryland Continentals right there. The regular Continental uniform. So this would have been staging area. Do that crow. All right, we're gonna head 
this way. So this battle took place in January, so it was probably pretty cold uh, during that time period from what I understand. The, um, I know the mountain men or the militia from this area would have been well uh, suited for this uh, terrain and also for this climate. So not quite sure how the British were as far as prepared for this type of weather. Uh, and I knew they a lot more of the heavy wool outfits, of course. And but the militia wore a lot of skins, and they they were well prepared for any change in the climate here. Weather played a big role in this battle and the pursuit from Tarleton. Uh, there were times to understand the different rivers close by where Morgan would retreat through or go across, and Tarleton would pursue him. And the rain would come in and flood the river, and they couldn't cross to pursue them. And they would like, hey, how you doing? Wave across the river, and you know they keep on going. So, yeah, weather plays a, can play a big, big, big thing in a battle. So for sure, spirit of the people. Morgan chose this ground for for its tactical advantages. A river to the rear to discourage the ranks from breaking, rising ground at which to post his regulars, and an open forest. Um, and a marsh on his side to thwart flanking maneuvers. And here's a map of the field here of battle. And most military commanders should, of course, do that. Uh, like I said, he knew this area, he knew the terrain, and the British weren't as familiar, of course, or wouldn't be, for, you know, of course, of what was here. So he knew where the rivers were, the marshes were, the banks were. So he definitely had tactical advantages. And again, like I said, if you haven't seen the Patriot, watch it. The very last battle is based on Calpins. And this definitely was open ground for cavalry, for sure, for the Dragoons. Uh, the open force proved well suited for cavalry action. Fast moving, hard hitting mounted troops called Light Dragoons bolster the 18th century infantry at least 70 south carolina and georgia mounted militiamen armed with pistols and sabers uh, issued for use in this campaign augmented the veteran 80 plus men american dragoons of lieutenant colonel william washington uh, posted in a swell nearby they were hidden from the british so if you look here yeah it's definitely was open and it's very flat here um, this was all farmland, so of course uh, you're not going to uh, have all these trees here. So it was—I mean—it was pretty much an open battlefield in this particular area. So cavalry would definitely be used in something like this. And then you have the forest over here, beyond these trees here. So yeah, you—you are you in open territory right so now. So today is Saturday, March, March 27th, um, or 28th, maybe 27th. <laughs> I kind of lost my, my days. So, but it's great. It feels great out here. It's like uh, around 70 degrees, 69, 70 degrees, and it's no humidity. It feels awesome. So we have overcast. I think the, the rain will hold, hold out. I don't think it's going to rain, so that's good. Had a, a nice little dousing yesterday or last night, and uh, so... But it feels great out here. Now, this would have been very significant too. Um, nearby retreating British officers of the 17th Light Dragoons clashed with pursuing American horsemen led by Lieutenant Colonel William Washington. He quickly outpaced his troops, broke his weapon at the hilt when he got into a sword fight with a British officer. According to legend, Washington's young servant rode up just in time, saving his life by shooting the attacking British officer. In this account, that probably inspired the artist William Rainey in 1845 to paint this vigorous battle scene. Washington and Tarleton raise their swords in the center while Washington's servant boy levels his pistol at a dragoon officer. This here is kind of gives you a Bannister's uh, troops what they would have worn. And if you ever remember watching Patriot, of course, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton wore this green outfit. Most of the Dragoons did, that was their typical uniform. So you get the Private of the 16th Light Infantry, the Royal Artillery, Private uh, 7th 
fuselage, fuselage, and then you also have the uh, private 71st Highlander group. You tell by their colors here with the uh, plaid and the hat that he's wearing. Of course, Scottish troops. So, yeah. But also, what's crazy about that part is that a lot of these militiamen and uh, mountain men that came down to fight were also Scottish. Um, so, like I said, it was British against British, Scottish against Scottish, depending on your loyalties um, at that time. So, yeah. All right, so we're going to head down the trail a little bit further. Let them get within killing distance, boys. Um, the American second line of defense stood in position right here. About sunrise, the British appeared. The militia, though not trained to stand against mass British bayonets, fought well and shot with deadly effect. So, see how open it is here? Wow. So, you're an open target, pretty much. You have to remember, too, these militia were awesome marksmen due to they relied on that for survival where they lived when hunting game for food. So, you know, they're taking out things 200, 300 yards with their muskets. I mean, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of these guys were nailing it when it came to their marksmanship. Skirmishers retreat the British advance. After firing as ordered, the American skirmishers melted back to the second line of defense. Seeing this, the British troops moved forward at quick step, raising a great shout as they advanced. Get the bayonets out too. That's pretty menacing when you see that too. When you see a bunch of bayonets coming at you by a full line of British soldiers in red. Here you go here, kind of shows you where they were deployed, what was going on, the tactics. Here's another angle of the battlefield. Yeah, so. All right, moving on. Yeah, um, the South was a big, big change for the war at that time against the British. Everything started going the, um, uh, the continental way as far as uh, um, winning certain battles and defeating the British Army. A race for the grasshopper. Near the end of the battle, as the Americans swept forward, two Continental officers sought to capture the enemy's light three-pounder grasshopper cannons. Captain Anderson of Maryland won the race when he used his uh, spontoon to vault forward onto one of the grasshoppers. Captain Kirkwood of Delaware captured the other. That's where see how the metal cutout of the cannon, the three-pounder cannon, right over there. That's where it was. Today, Charleston's forces would be called a Combined Arms Task Force. It contained all the elements to conduct a quick movement and engage an enemy. Ranks of red-coated fusiliers, regulars, and raw recruits of the 7th Regiment formed in this immediate area. Wetlands impeded the maneuvers of the 7th, and Tarleton initiated the battle before they were completely deployed. Which is not good. So, yeah, here's your, um... Here's your cane right here. Yeah, so your bamboo and all that stuff. This stuff will grow fast too. I got some of that stuff in my backyard. That'll get thick and thick and thick. But uh, kind of gives you an idea of the growth of this cane here. Cane break restoration. There you go. So it's the native bamboo played a significant role in the outcome of this battle. So look how thick that is. Can you imagine troops having to wade through that stuff? Especially in bogs that it's growing from too. The, the area below would be really moist as well. So yeah, I can, that's just crazy going through that stuff. Real, real thick. That would definitely impede movement for sure. Double envelopment. On the, this field, the Continentals blunted the British advance, then charged with bayonets flashing Cavalry hit the left and right of the 71st. The militia reformed and surged against the right and left. 
British troops found themselves overwhelmed and surrounded. Morgan had executed a devil envelopment. In less than an hour, the crucial battle of Calpins had been decided. Pretty wild. So that tactic was actually used by Hannibal. Then, of course, uh, Morgan used that as well. So it's very cool. Okay, this is a great representation of what was going on in the area for North and South Carolina. We do want to hit, you got Camden, you've got uh, the Waxhaws, which that was a bad situation. We'll definitely go there. It's actually closer to home where this happened. Um, Winsboro, of course, Cowpens here, then Kings Mountain. And of course, uh, if you look at my recent video, here's the Guilford Courthouse here and what happened. And of course, the route that Cornwallis had taken to Virginia and Yorktown, where the decisive end of the war was at Yorktown. So eventually we will hit Yorktown and uh, do a video there as well. If you haven't been, definitely go to Williamsburg and York, uh, Yorktown Battlefield in the, the Jamestown's there too. So you have all kinds of cool uh, historic sites to visit. Also, the bathrooms are open. Even though the visitor center is closed, the men's and women's bathroom is open. So, it looks like the water fountain might be running. Not quite sure. Let's see. I don't know if some aren't. Nope. Turned off. So, make sure you grab a brochure. They do have these available up front. So, there's a map. And also gives you a history of what happened here and in the region. So make sure to grab one of these at the front door. And if you want to, after you do the tour of the battlefield, we're gonna take the tour road. You can drive around. There's a couple other locations that we can see. So we'll go down this uh, road here. It goes around the battlefield. And like I said, this is where a lot of the cyclists will come and cycle around the park. Get some good exercise and uh, just to have a nice little uh, ride through the park. Got a picnic area over here. Check the camper out. Wow. I don't know if they boondock or not, but it looks like they have uh, hookups over there. That's pretty cool. Didn't know they had that. And the gates close at 5, just to let you know. So you don't want to be here after 5. A little cabin over there. There is a trail to the cabin over there. Pretty good walk on the battlefield to it. So that house you saw was the Scrug house, the Scruggs house. So like I said, you can, it's a little bit off the trail. It's a good good walk if you're taking the battlefield tour of the battlefield. But they do have reenactments there of that uh, period of living. Historic reenactors are there uh, dressed for that period from 1781. So. I appreciate you joining me for this little excursion to Cal Penn's Battlefield. I was hoping that the uh, visitor center would be open because they have a, from what I remember, it's been a while, they have a cool movie that you can watch and they have a lot of historic artifacts, the uniforms, what they would have used during the battle, and a lot more in-depth history of what was going on here. So, yeah, so hopefully that'll be open soon uh, for summertime. And also, uh, they do have reenactments here. From what I've read, there's some areas, parks that are not gonna start doing that probably until 2022. So this summer's kind of a canceled thing. I'm not sure here. You might wanna check back every now and then on their website. I'll have that under the description as well. So visit that and see if they do have the uh, reenactment here because they have a lot of the historians come here in the uh, vintage, you know, the, the actual clothing and they'll do demonstrations you know, that, which is pretty cool. But yeah, uh, definitely check back their site every now and then. It could change uh, week to week, month to month, day to day. Who knows of what the events might be going on out here at Cowpens. So please, I hope you enjoy this. Like, subscribe. Also hit the notification bell so it'll let you know when I have my next video up and running. So that'll be soon. So there's some, some stuff uh, coming up, more content for train, uh, pertaining to uh, history of North Carolina and South Carolina. So we will be visiting more historic sites like this, some of the small towns you know, that you might want to visit. Also, 
there's a lot of wineries, vineyards, in both North and South Carolina, because uh, uh, Connie and I definitely want to visit those and share that with you as well. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. You all take care. Bye-bye.